Hello everybody and welcome back to the Business Growth Club. This is your weekly edition from us and in this week's edition we're going to look at never giving up. Now the reason I have called it never give up is because sometimes email marketing, which is uh, the focus, the next step on our journey and the focus of today's video, can feel a little bit like uh, a very enduring war. But as a very famous Briton uh, said in 1941, never, 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 never give up. Now most people uh, misquote this quotation uh, and they say never, never give up. But actually if you f read the full speech it's actually never, 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 never give up. So there's a couple of extra nevers and um, this is never more applicable than when we're looking at email marketing. Sometimes it can feel when people aren't responding to the emails or a section of people aren't responding, like you've lost the battle. However, it is a war and you haven't lost the war yet, so you need to keep fighting. And let me explain why this is. You've sent your initial email and you got some responses. You've sent your focus follow-up email series of 10, which we looked at in last week's video, and you got some responses. You've maybe followed people up on the telephone, letter, text message, social media connections, that sort of stuff. And again, you've got some business. But then you've still got this 90, 95% of people who don't respond. And that's why it can feel a little bit like you're losing the battle, but you haven't lost the war. And I'm going to give you some examples later of how, even after a year or two, you can still get results through email marketing. So this is the focus of today's video, the next step in this email marketing journey, the ongoing follow-up and how you do that, how you do it with a reasonable time investment, it's not going to take you too much time, a cost, reasonably low cost because um, email marketing just isn't expensive even if you've got a list of um, 10,000 it's still only going to cost you maybe a hundred pounds a month to email them as many times as you'd like uh, and it is effective. Email marketing always gives you the highest return on investment of all the marketing campaigns we run and we'll probably have 30 ourselves on the go at any one time and you know, countless campaigns for all our clients that we're uh, either running or advising or helping on. And across all of those campaigns, at the top of return on investment, email marketing is always there, and that includes this ongoing follow-up. So let me explain why that is and why it's a battle uh, that you may have lost, but you certainly haven't lost the war. There are buying cycles. We accept there are buying cycles. People move in and out of a buying cycle. We call this a moving parade. People will be interested in your services and then they don't need your services. And then maybe they're interested and they don't need your services. And then something happens and they desperately need your services. And then they stop needing your services. People come in and out of your services. The same as you don't want a Chinese takeaway every single night, but you might buy one regularly. But the Chinese takeaway has always got to be there and reminding you that they exist so they can get your business when your moving parade falls in. So what you've got to remember is people join your list for a reason. Um, they're interested. A lot of them are opening your emails. So why would you give up on them? And remember we talk about this, it takes seven touches for someone to become a customer. And it does, but that's an average, which means all of those people who respond straight away, well, that means everybody else has to go much more than seven contacts to make seven a fair, mean average. So always remember that there's a reason why these people are interested in you. People come in and out of a buying cycle. Sometimes it's even cost. People can't afford you now, but they can later. Um, and there's, there's just no reason for you to give up on them. You need to keep contacting them. You've invested so much in them, so you need to continue. So what is your challenge going forward? Well, your challenge is to send people the best email they will receive. Um, I'm going to say every week because I recommend that you email people every week. Um, I also probably recommend that you send them an email on the same day every week. Once you've done all your split testing and you realise that 2 o'clock on a Friday is the best for you as it is for me. Yours might be 1 o'clock on a Sunday, yours might be a Tuesday afternoon, whatever it happens to be. Um, I would say send it every week and send it, reasonably speaking, on the same time and day every week. Your challenge is to make it the best email they receive every week. So even if they're not at the point of using your services right now, they look forward to receiving your emails and like to open them. I know because people tell me they look forward to receiving my emails that I send to my list and I get positive responses on a routine basis of people saying that I thank you for the email, I enjoyed this. That is your challenge. Not to send people emails trying to sell them stuff. 
You tell them stuff by using intrigue to get it opened, by telling stories to keep people interested, by being personal so that you can connect with people on a human level. You add value to their business or their life. You give advice to help their business or their life. You become useful to them or their business. You do have something to promote, but you also have something to say, something useful, something advisory, something of a value, something intriguing, something that's a story, something personal. You see how this all ties together? But crucially, you also have something to offer. You're not just promoting services and saying, please buy this. You've got a seasonal promotion. You've got a loss leader. You've got an introductory offer. You've got a reason to do business with people. Maybe you've got a competition for people to enter. That sort of stuff. You've also got to build trust and credibility with people. So they know that you're trustworthy and they know that you're an expert and you can do the job. And you're the right person for them. And you beat your competition. You've also got to connect with them on that human level. And then, of course, when you do have these promotions, these offers, competitions to enter, whatever, you've got to ask for a sale. You've got to do that call to action. So that is your challenge. And sometimes when I say send weekly emails, it can be, um, it can sound quite daunting. But actually, when you see here, there's so many different avenues you've got. And in next week's video, I'm actually going to talk to you about the 10 most effective emails I have personally sent. And I'm going to show you how they worked and why they worked. And I'll show you how you can tap into these themes, even if your business is entirely different to mine, because it doesn't really matter. It's the principles, the principles of how you use intrigue and stories and being personable. So, or personal even. So you'll you'll see the the, the different ways in, in next week's video you can do this. But if you just look at this now, there's so many options for you. Um, and there's there's so many ways that you can pack a weekly email and uh, and make it something that people really look forward to receiving and thank you for receiving. Imagine that you get a thank you from someone saying thank you very much for sending me your effectively promotional email. And here are the results. What you're doing, the point of using uh, the intrigue and all, all of that sort of stuff, is that people stop and take notice. They get to know you and they get to trust you. So then they're empowered to engage with you. And then, hopefully, they buy from you. So how are you going to do that? Well, always using your email software. Please never send it from your own Outlook. Um, that's uh, a few of you have contacted me saying, do I need to use email software? You absolutely do. So if, if you don't, you'll get into all sorts of trouble, um, sort of spam conditions and all of this. I don't really want to go into it because I just want to tell you don't do it. It's, it's, it's the worst idea you could have. So always using your email software, you will talk to the list and see it as talking to your list. A lot of people sell, tell me that they're selling to their list or they're working their list. I don't see it like that at all. I see it as you're talking to your list. You're communicating with people on a human level. Now, I would say you should be doing that every week. And as I say, probably a fixed time um, and, and day of the week. Now, you've got two broad options. You can do this via an easy or via a regular plain text email. Now, you can use an easy, but I'm not saying you shouldn't, but my comments would be it's not very personal because it's obviously a corporate email. Whereas with a plain email, people might just believe you've written it for them, or at least for a small number of people, maybe a handful of people. Sometimes I'll email people, and instead of saying, I'm emailing you, Bob, specifically, because he probably doesn't believe that, I sometimes say, Bob, I'm emailing you and a handful of other people, because I believe this would be perfect for your type of business. So you can't really do that with an easing, because nobody would send an easing to six people. It's also more human to send a plain text email. Problem with an easing is it doesn't really ask for the sale because it's a series of articles. Uh, and really, a series of articles is better positioned on your website or your blog. And people don't find easings particularly easy to use or to read. There's a lot of scrolling up and down. You've got to um, you've got some links that you've got to click on. You've got to try and download some pictures. Um, so there are certain challenges to easings. So if you do send easings, I would actually start to add a little spice into them, kind of spice them up a little bit. I would maybe run competitions, so maybe a monthly competition or a weekly competition. I would present videos so people can, if they don't want to read, they can watch. I would start running human interest stories. Maybe you're preparing for something like, um, say, the Great North Run has just, um, has just, been, uh, just been for the year. Maybe you could do 
um, a run-up to the Great North Run next year if you're running it for charity or something like this. Maybe your business's charity of the year. Human interest stories. Maybe somebody's going on a journey and that's interesting. Um, also stand, send out the kind of extra. So if you're going to send out a monthly easy, which is what most people do, and I don't think that's enough, you can send a weekly extra. Maybe in the same easy in style, but very much smaller. Maybe a story, what you've done this week, or some themes. So maybe you can run... Um, something on, say if you are me for instance, you might run a theme on emails and how they will work for your business, a bit like these videos. Or maybe updates on what you've been doing. Um, you can do these sort of what my week has been like type emails and use some human interest stories so you can blend the couple of styles. So I'm not saying don't use e-zines, I'm not saying plain text is better. I personally prefer plain text, but to some extent it does depend on your business and if yours is a business that appeals to images so if you're a, um, a shop that sells jewelry or something like this you would probably be better having um, an easing so you can use all of your pictures but for a lot of businesses a plain text will work better but if you do use an easing I would follow the advice on this screen to kind of um, speed up your responses okay so what do you offer people in these emails I've talked about using human interest and intrigue and all of this sort of stuff so what do you actually offer people what's the content of the emails well You've got countless things to choose from, but I would say here's 12 of my favourites here. The first one is advice. Give people advice in your general sphere. This particularly works for professional service firms. Top tips. Give people, t if you're a barbecue shop, 10 reasons to use a barbecue, or 10 things to do when it rains on a barbecue day, or 10 top recipes. So top tips that relate to your industry. Case studies. This is what Mr Smith found when he used our services. Can this relate to you? Information, just useful information about the industry. Trends in the industry, stuff to look out for. Help people to buy stuff in your industry. Some of the um, mistakes people make when they're buying. You can invite people to webinars. You can invite people to seminars so you can meet them offline. You can invite people to events. So maybe you're running an open day or something like this. You can send people videos for people to watch. You can send people to pages on your website where you explain and maybe sell your services. You can give people promotions so it could be a seasonal offer. You can send people to great blogs you've written that have good responses. Or you can offer people a one-to-one -one consultation. So there's just 12 options and I would probably say if you're going to send 52 a year, maybe pick four great examples of each of these so sit down with a very big piece of paper and write down four pieces of advice you can give them four top tips four case studies mix them all up into some sort of coherent order and that's your blueprint for um, you know that that would be 48 emails add a few extras or a few repeats you've got a weekly email significantly easier than you might first imagine now here's some personal examples because a lot of people would say to me, does it really work emailing these lists? Because as we said, never, 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 never give up. But it can feel like you want to because you've emailed the list, you've done a few focus follow-ups and you've got some responses. But then you're starting to email the list and what will happen? Well, let me just share some of my personal examples. Now obviously clients of mine have had all sorts of different experiences, but I can talk about these very freely because they've, they've happened to me. Now, this is how email marketing works. Um, you know, I've had two clients uh, uh, relatively recently who opted out of receiving the email, so I thought, oh, maybe this email marketing doesn't work. Uh, but they became on board as clients, and um, I've, I've, I've looked at them, and uh, just their first year income will be 3,600 and just over 700 pounds. So you can see that's uh, over 4,000 pounds from people who have just said, oh, I don't want to receive these emails. Um, but they were people I'd completely and utterly lost contact with. These were people I weren't speaking with. And all of a sudden they became clients. Did the emails help? Did they not? Well, it proves this idea that you've got to keep speaking with people and keep communicating with people. Um, upsell and cross-sell with clients. I'm going to actually do a, the next DVD that you'll receive in the post on how to use email marketing for customers. Because a lot of the stuff I'm talking about here, whilst you can also send it to your customers it's probably more relevant to your prospects and trying to convince people to, to sell. However, up and cross sell with clients, I get a significant number of inquiries by sending relevant emails to clients promoting up and, sell, uh, up and cross sell products. I also send it to clients 
just to sometimes add value. I'll send them these helpful emails and people get good tips from it. A lot of people would say to me, um, oh, I received your email and I read this, that and the other and I've implemented it and it works. But not paying any extra, they're not bought an upsell on a cross-sell, but it's helped to keep customers happy and engaged and believing your value added. That's fantastic. If you do that, they're just more likely to stay, more likely to refer a friends, and crucially, more likely to actually buy other services in the future. So it's, it's a long-term game. And there's nothing better actually than getting an email from a client saying, thank you very much for sending me this email. Because a lot of people worry about sending promotional emails to their customers. And when you get customers saying, thanks so much, this is fantastic. Well, <laughs> you know, there's nothing better than that. That feels even better actually than when you promote an upsell and a cross-sell product and people say, I'd like to buy this, please, you know, can I buy it? That's good. Um, but when people just say, thanks for giving me this advice, it, it, it's really helped me. Um, you know, you, 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 that feels great on a personal level, but what you're doing for your business is, is quite, uh, quite brilliant, really. So, um, so that's a benefit. And here's a campaign we, we've been running this week, actually. In the week that I've recorded this video, uh, we've been doing this. Uh, we've been following up people who have been on the list. Um, I believe they've been on the list over a year. I can't give you an exact date because people have joined the list, it, it, you know, over, over a, you know, a, a small but still a, an elongated time period. Um, but if I say a year, I think that's being reasonably conservative. And I've emailed them every single week. Obviously, some of those people have responded and we started doing stuff. But these are people who haven't responded. We've done some follow-up work on the telephone, about 10 hours work in the office, and we've generated five appointments. Now, maybe in next week's video, I'll tell you how that panned out. Uh, and how many sales we made. But five appointments, I'd imagine there's a couple of sales in there. These are people who... You know, we've lost a lot of battles with these people because we've emailed them for a year and we haven't got any business. But we've picked up the telephone and we've mixed our emails to our telephone and I'm always saying this, email your list. But also, you should um, you should send your letters, you should do your telephones, you should connect on the social media, send text messages, all of this sort of stuff. That's why sometimes offering people webinars and seminars can work so well or competitions for that matter, because it's the data capture, you capture their details. So if you have their name and email address, for example, um, say they've downloaded a report, I will offer them a full colour printed copy of it if they give me their, their, their address. Maybe I'll offer people um, a telephone a consultation, uh, maybe a group call, um, but uh, on the data capture form we get their telephone number. All of these people we've managed to capture their telephone number over time, even though they haven't responded. And as I say, 10 hours work, 5 appointments. That's a pretty good return uh, on investment. A lot of these people had actually heard um, of us. When people were saying they were calling on behalf of me, um, but they'd heard, they recognised the email because every single week, 2 o'clock on a Friday, it hits their inbox. That regularity. So that's just some personal examples. And as I say, um, in, in the DVD you'll get in the post from the Business Growth Club, we'll actually be sharing with you um, the, uh, the, the customer angle and how you can send different emails if you want to your customers. Or even if you want to send the same one, just how to reassure you that it's not a major problem. But hopefully this shows you it's not if I'm getting emails from people saying thanks very much for sending me this. And in next week's video, like I say, I'll use 10 examples of the best emails I've written or the best campaigns we've done where we've mixed it with the offline. Uh, and hopefully by then as well I'll have attended these five appointments and I'll be able to tell you uh, the outcomes as well. So that brings us to the end of today's recording. As I say, I call this Never Give Up um, after Winston Churchill and his, his famous, uh, famous phrase to uh, never, 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 never give up because email marketing really will be fruitful. As I've just said there, we've, we've left people for a year and then we've generated five appointments. What does that tell us? These people are obviously interested. They want to do business with us. They've just not got round to it. So if we'd email them for another year, maybe we'll get another five appointments. You've got to keep working it. And I think this uh, quote from Michael Jordan really um, demonstrates or, 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 or captures the essence of um, sending lots of emails. Sometimes it feels like you're giving up, but actually, overall, that's how you succeed. And it simply says, I've missed more than 9,000 shots in my career. I've lost almost 300 games, 26 times. I've been trusted to take the game-winning shot and missed. I've failed over and over and over again in my life. And that is why I succeed. And sometimes reflect on this when you're sending emails. 
Maybe some of the emails you send will be misses. Some of those 9,000 shots that they just don't go anywhere. Maybe it will feel like you're sending emails and you're losing. Maybe you'll feel like someone inquires after an email and you have a shot of a business and you don't get it. But if you see those as failures, and that's happening time and again, actually look out for those successes because it's building on those failures, learning from those failures, and actually just not giving up and continuing to invest in the email marketing and saying this will work over time and having the confidence to invest in it and not just seeing the initial champagne moment where you get a flurry of in inquiries at the beginning. Like I say, if you get a, a 3 to 5% response rate, it feels great, but you've got 95 to 97% still to go at. And it may feel like you're losing at times, but you will succeed in the end. So just reflect on what I think is one of the, the best quotes on um, learning from your mistakes, continuing on your development, and actually realizing that the people who succeed the most also fail the most. And if you're sending emails for a couple of weeks and they feel like they're failing, you're only a little bit away from your next successful shot. As I say, the more no's you get, the closer you are to a yes. So just reflect on this fantastic quote as you go with your email marketing and know it's a long-term um, affair and to keep that long-term effort up. As I say, next week we'll look at some great examples of emails that have worked for me and then you'll be uh, receiving the DVD in the post looking at how to work your customers, some novel ideas, some different ways of treating them and just some reassurance. So I hope this is useful. As always, any questions, just fire off an email or, or give me a call. I'm more than happy to help. Um, as I've said before, we've had a fantastic response to this email marketing series. That's why I've added a few extras along the way. So if I can help you in any way, please get in touch. But between now and then, have a fantastic time in business. Goodbye for now.